We're going to get started. This again is Pokemon Yoga. And we will be just going through some things that are a little fun and a little casual. I am Riffing Designs and this is going to be a Designs for Zen Yoga today. So all you need is your mat. We're going to get started by picking your Pokemon starter. So <laughs> whichever one you like, you're going to use that pose to get started. If you prefer having a ground Pokemon, you can start on your back in Savasana. And if you are a water Pokemon, you can start in child's pose. If you are a fire Pokemon, you can start in mountain pose, which is just standing. Or if you have a different type that you prefer, you can join me cross-legged. Once you've decided on your starter Pokemon, you can close your eyes or just invite a gentle gaze and start to settle into your body, into where you are today. Just notice your breath, notice your feelings, notice if you do have tension, notice the heat or coolness of your breath as you inhale and exhale. Maybe notice the sounds around you if you're playing the Pokemon music that is listed down below or if you are playing any other kinds of music that help you through your yoga practice or maybe like me you're enjoying the silence. Just begin to notice your body and depending on the element that you have chosen for your Pokemon starter, begin to picture that element in your head for ground or grass types, maybe you notice your body touching the earth. For water, noticing the flow of your body, your heart, your breath, the air. For fire, maybe breathing a little deeper, really stretching out in a casual yet firm way. And for any other type, just picture how you can imagine that in your body. Steel, maybe straightening up your spine a little and dragon obviously right again that deep breath and strong confidence begin to pick your intention think of what you would like to dedicate your practice to today it can be anyone or anything or maybe just being thankful for being on your mat for me, and if you want to join me, we are going to have the adventure is within. We're going to do a little bit of pretend, but you can make anything fun. And that's part of why we do this here at Riffling Designs. We practice Bob Ross style yoga, which is you can make as many mistakes as you want, as long as you're having fun and as long as you don't feel like you're getting hurt or injured. So now start to be really mindful of your breath taking deeper breaths in and out. Perhaps using one of the breathing techniques we've used in other videos, which again can be found on YouTube. Picturing that element, maybe a color associated with it, visualizing the breath as it fills in, filling you with that light in every exhale, getting rid of any negativity or bad energy so that you can be one with yourself and one with your Pokemon. We'll take another deep breath in here. Now think of your intention again. We're going to seal our intention so you can flutter your eyes open if you like. And if you're with me, again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, sweep them down to the sides. One more big, hail, big inhale up. Put your hands together, pull them to your heart center and think of that intention. We're going to do two breaths to seal it in. First, big inhale and big exhale. And then to seal, another big inhale and exhale. Welcome to your Pokemon Yoga practice. From wherever you are, slowly find your way into either a seated or standing position. And we're going to do our warm ups. To begin with, shoulder rolls always, where you take your shoulders back and down, forward, up, back and down. 
I call this a square shape, so you really overemphasize the ways that your shoulders are rolling. And then when you're ready, we go backwards. So back, up, forward, and down. Finding balance in yoga means going both directions, treating both sides equally. Just as there is an opposite Pokemon to whatever element that you chose that is your weakness. If you embrace that weakness and take time to understand it, perhaps it won't be as bad. All right, now we're gonna start moving our neck around, just baby movements back and forth. Don't do big neck rolls yet, just baby movements, loosening up your joints. Inhaling as you're rolling up, exhale as you go down. And then if you're comfortable, you can do a full neck roll, but only if it is comfortable. We want no pain, burning, aching, sharpness, stinging. All of those are bad in yoga. If there's a little discomfort, that's fine. Maybe you pause at one area where your neck is sore and you can use that string that's attached to your nose to just kind of move your neck around and see if you can't find an area to stretch it out. You'll know if you find it, <laughs> you will know. Give you another 30 seconds or so to do that. And if you need to move your shoulders some more, go right ahead. Just loosening up your upper body. And then we'll come to stillness, coming back to the breath. Next, we're going to use our spine stretches. We're going to go straight into our cat cow. So you can do this seated or you can go onto hands and knees. Planting your hands with really wide fingertips underneath your shoulders. Knees are down hip distance apart. The backs of your feet are touching the mat. So you're pressing down here. Just first, again, notice, first we'll do the earth and the ground, right? Notice how you're touching the ground. Just breathe here, coming into the elements of air and fire. Just breathe. In Pokemon, you need all types to be able to beat those gym leaders, right? So we're gonna use all types here in our yoga practice. Now we're gonna to start to bring that movement in, right? Again, it can be flowing like air or water or grass, whatever element you wanna picture. You're gonna exhale as you're folding up. Inhale as you're reaching your chest, shining out, breathing here. Exhale and inhale. These are your cat cows. Notice keeping your feet and your knees and your hands still. You're just moving your chest and your tailbone. And if you want, you can add some movement here, maybe moving side to side, really warming up the spine in all three planes, up, down, twisting. And if you've been with me before, you know I always like to move around those hips. And I really like to go forward into a little bit of a stretch like this, if it feels good for you. Just warming up your spine and hips here. And now if you're in chat and you wanna put your favorite Pokemon, I am gonna be doing some Pokemon poses cause that's what we did with the cosplay and Yogi. So we'll make it fun. <laughs> and we're gonna to come to stillness here, give you a chance to put in your Pokemans. We'll see what we got going on. From here, some of the things that you're going to do as a Pokemon trainer a lot is walk <laughs> and also throw Pokeballs. So we're gonna warm up our shoulders and our legs and hips. So first off, legs and hips. From your tabletop, we're going to stretch out our right leg and just hold it here, making sure to flex those toes, looking down at the mat so your neck is not moving too much and then slowly move it up and down. Breathing, never forget to breathe. And then bend your knee, open your hip. So you're actually kicking over. Do it like this so you can see better like this. And then start to move that hip around. Some call this fire hydrant pose. Warming up that hip. And then when you're ready, Pull it into your chest. 
hold here, then stretch out. If you want, you can extend the opposite arms, your left arm out, so you've got right leg back, left arm out. Holding here, and maybe exhale, curl in. And you can do a couple of those if you want. Bird dog, and a cheetah type pose here. And then let it down. Maybe shake out those wrists, because in Pokemon you always gotta have good loose wrists. And then come back to tabletop. Left leg goes out, just hold it here. Notice the strength, come back to your element and your breath, looking down. Then slowly start to move your leg up and down. And then bend your knee and start to do those hip rolls, both directions. <laughs> Did you hear that crack? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Again, in this type of yoga, do what works for you. If you don't like this, you can do it standing or you can go to child's pose, whatever you need here. And then once you're ready, tuck that knee and just hold it for a moment. Notice your balance, your breath, and then hold it out. Again, option here to take your right arm out going into your bird dog. Then exhale, pull it in and maybe do a couple at your own speed. Nice. I swear this is as intense as it'll get. <laughs> All right, then lower back down, come back to your heels, shake out those arms. Great work. Now we're gonna come into a wide-legged fold. So first just fold over your legs, outstretched nice and wide. If you have your block or a paper towel roll, you can use that to help out. Again, I have my aids and yoga sessions on YouTube, which will give you lots more hints. <sighs> Just breathing into it. And you can go as low as you want, but you really wanna focus on keeping your spine straight. If you let it go, it'll give you a very different stretch. Then come on back up. Maybe just notice again how you're touching the earth here with your sits bones and your legs. Then inhale, arms up, twisting your torso, turn to one leg and fold over. Again, we're not going for the depth of the folds dropping down. We really wanna get that tall spine stretch. Warming up those hips just a little more. And then inhale back up, straighten. Notice the difference maybe. Then rotate your torso here and come on down the other side. Noticing again, any differences on both sides. All right, <laughs> and here we go, inhaling back up. We're gonna pull our legs in and maybe just do a little windshield wiper, moving both knees side to side here. Releasing those hips, good. All right, next we've got arms. We'll do it a little seated, but we will come up to standing. So just find a comfortable seat. Maybe you wanna stay cross-legged or if you wanna go into hero pose, you can sit like this. Or with the toes tucked for a little bit of extra stress and stretching on those feet. Again, we're gonna do arms. So first windmill. I like to do opposite windmills, so one arm goes forward and one arm goes back. It's a very interesting movement, one we haven't done in this yoga session for a bit. But we really want to warm up to throw that Pokeball and then go the other way. <laughs> right? Have fun with this, guys. Yeah. All right. And then arms out, T-pose. Hold it here. Breathe. Then turn one palm up and then switch. So palm up and down. You see that? You're rotating a little bit of your shoulders. You can move your neck too if that feels good. It does really, <laughs> really getting that nice twist in. All right, then let it go. Shake it out. Maybe do some more wrist rolls. I like to do like a little Macarena. And then if you have a strap, a tie, a shirt, any kind of a long implement, we're gonna do some flossing. <laughs> Not your teeth. Not your teeth, we're gonna do some arm flossing. So we've done this before as well. It's been a little bit, but I wanted to pull out some goodies for our Pokemon training. So you take your strap 
or long flexible device, or even I think we did uh, staff yoga with the Owl House and we used it. So you take it in your hands, inhale, arms up, and exhale down. Noticing the movements of your arms, you may need to have your hands wider or closer. And then as it's comfortable for you, perhaps you start to go further back. Your shoulder joints, if they are fully functional, can do this all the way around without letting go of the strap. You may have some knots or kinks or issues where you cannot. So only go as far as you can, but this is called arm flossing and <laughs> shoulder flossing. So if you can't do that, you're always welcome to go to the back. Just hold it here and maybe do a couple this way as well. Whatever works for you, this is your yoga practice. It's like jumping rope. <laughs> Find what works for you. Some can't do that triple jump. All right. And then we're just gonna fold over here. Maybe if you've got that strap still, you step on the strap, exhale, halfway lift, get a nice little stretch in here. And you can wrap your hands around it to go deeper. You can have a little bend in your knee too, if that feels good. And then when you're ready, we're gonna do a forward fold and just hang here, grab your elbows, let it go and ragdoll. All right, so then plant your hands, inhale again, flat back, holding here, exhale, fold. Then we're gonna walk our hands out and get into our downward facing dog. This is called Eevee Pose for our Pokemon Yoga for the Cosplaying Yogis. For it again, notice those hands and feet, just like we did before. Find your element, find your breath here. Good. And then we're going to exhale, come into plank, Inhale, back up. One more time. That's all we're doing. You notice your shoulders were working there. Now walk your hands back to your feet and find your way back to standing. For some reason today, I cannot get my whole mat in. <laughs> so we're starting in mountain pose. Breathe here, come back to your element. And we're gonna do tippy toe pose. So tippy toe pose, literally you just inhale, rise up on your tiptoes. Try to stand still here. Notice if you need to have bent knees, keep your head straight, shoulders back and down, really pulling the chest. Maybe even you grab your hands. And then exhale down. Maybe bend those knees, come into like a little squat or chair pose if you want. And then come on back up, we're gonna go tippy toe again. This time, we're gonna do baby steps forward. Little baby steps, really noticing as you shift weight and you walk up your mat. So we're stalking through the grass now. We've left Pallet Town or your starter town of choice. You really wanna be careful as you're stalking. When you get to the top, back up. Notice how different it is going back and keep those steps small. If you need to take a break, take a break but you're really working on the balance on your toes here. Good. All right, when you get to the back of your mat, you can stay or rest. From here, we're gonna start to do knee lifts. So you're on your toes, knee lift. Stay on your toes. If it gets too intense, you can just do it with your feet down as well. But you really wanna focus on feeling every muscle. <laughs> Did you think walking could be so difficult? There you go. At the top again, pause, and then go backwards. Really hard for me to go slow backwards. Whew. <laughs> Keep going, have fun with it. Just be safe, no falling into dangerous objects, please. All right, when you get to the back again, maybe inhale, come into a yogi squat. Whew. Notice that. So we have ventured through the grass, and of course we're gonna spot our first Pokemon. Woo! <laughs> Whichever it is, if you play Nuzlocke, it's gonna be your best friend. So from here, first off, let's plant our hands and just kinda do some side-to-sides. 
If you want, you're welcome to come up into a twist. So you're lifting one arm. The other arm is still pressing into your leg here. Plant your hand, try the other side. Just have fun with it. There are so many cool things you can do from each pose. And then plant your hands, lift your bottom, come into a little forward fold. All right, we found our Pokemon. We gotta get our Pokeball. I happen to have one. <laughs> All right, so, and within it is, of course, uh, Corsola, one of my six favorites, so I've got her. So what we're gonna do here is from standing, we're gonna take those arms, and I'm just gonna do it like this, you can see my whole arms. We're gonna pretend we're holding a Pokeball, or if you have a ball, grab it. <laughs> we're gonna windmill each arm, right? Forward or back, oh my gosh, did you just hear my shoulder? <laughs> do three each direction, like you're getting ready to pitch that softball overhand or underhand. All right, good. Then the throwing motion, take your arm, pull your hand back, push it forward. So you're just pressing like a shot put almost. Then keep your hand on your shoulder, do some chicken moves, chicken arms. Now you've probably been using your dominant throw hand. Guess what? <laughs> we gotta find our weak side too. So switch your Pokeball to the other hand, doing three wheels one way. Ooh, three wheels the other way. And then we shot put, pressing forward. And then hold your hand at your elbow and do your chicken arm, moving around the elbow. Nice work. All right. Now, we've done both sides. We've got our Pokeball. And we're holding our chicken arms with both sides. Guess what? Why don't we do both forward, pressing, interlace your fingers. So you're pressing forward here. And we'll do it again. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down. If you are super flexible and you don't dislocate your shoulder, you might be able to go a little bit further back, maybe a little back bend. And then release your hands coming up wide. Sweep and come back up. Now we're gonna, from standing, since you all are standing. Make them big sweeps. Brush your fingers on the ground. Good. One more, and then come to standing. Pull your hands to heart center. All right, we have thrown the Pokeball, and now we have to step to it. <laughs> so we're just gonna go forward into our crescent lunge. Hands again can stay together. They can be up, they can be behind. Or they can be on your hips. Find your crescent here. Your knees should be bent, back heel is up, both knees facing forward. Just breathe here. So this is crescent. If you rotate your foot that 45 degrees, you come into warrior one. And then we're gonna do humble warrior. So even as we're catching our Pokemon, we need to know that it's gonna be our friend. So to show humility, you actually fold over this front knee. I like to do it with my hands behind me here. But you can plant your hands if you need to. Humble warrior. And then use your core to lift back up. Warrior. We're gonna open up into warrior two. Breathe here. Come into five-pointed star. Then we're gonna do the other side. Warrior two. Bent front knee. Again, that back foot in an angle. Then you rotate into your warrior one. Since we're going backwards, guess what's next? Humble warrior. Fold over that knee, holding strong. Breathe here. And then inhale using your core. Then you're gonna rotate your foot, lift your heel into crescent. Breathing again. Noticing your balance here. And then if you want from here, you can plant your hands and go through a flow. If you wanna do your up, downs, up dogs and down dogs, go right ahead. I actually had a bit of an injury this week, so I am not going to do that. Listen to your body. All right. We're all gonna meet in down dog, Evie pose. All right, so 
Uh, whatever Pokemon you caught, great. Do we have any favorite Pokemons in the chat? Not yet. Excellent. <laughs> well then, we'll, why don't we go through some evolutions together? So we have our normal, which is our down, down Eevee. And because we've been talking about elements, we can do lightning, right? So why don't we go into a low lunge? You can put your knee down here. And then pull your hands back. Breathe in here. Then exhale, arms forward like you're shooting bolts. Inhale back. Exhale. One more time. Awesome. Then plant your hands. Go back to your Eevee. Exhale, other leg up. Step it through. Low lunge. Hands come out. And once more. So we're doing electric. And then come back up. Plant your hands back to Eevee. For fire, why don't you walk your hands? And we can do our chair pose, because that burns, right? <laughs> Just sink on down into chair, breathing here. Your knees should be together, but I like to keep my feet apart. Some people say, oh, keep your toes together. If you need a break while I'm talking, please do. <laughs> keep your toes together. Well, guess what? My hips don't work that way. From here, we're gonna take our hands in, shoot them out, and do a twist. You want burning? This is definitely a fire pose. Your knees should still not be too far apart from each other. One should not be too far in front of the other. Exhale, back to center, forward fold, rest. <sighs> Breathe. <laughs> Inhale, back to chair. Pull those arms out and twist the other way. The burn of the fire. Right, flare on. And then exhale out. One more hold the chair. Oh my gosh. Whoa, burn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to walk it out into Eevee or maybe you need a child's pose. For water, <laughs> which is really funny. We did a standing pose, so we'll go into that next. <sighs> so you can step, hop, hop, or walk your feet forward. Come into a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And then inhale all the way up. Coming back to standing. Breathe here in your mountain pose. All right, so we're, you can do tree pose here if that works for you. This is kind of more like a leafy on pose, I suppose. But we'll start here. So tree pose, you just lift one leg putting the weight in the other foot, making sure your toes are nice and spread, micro bend in the knee. You can just float your foot and have it near your ankle or on your lower leg or on your upper leg, but do not put it on your knee. And you can stand there, just breathing. Hands can be up or down or on your hips. For additional challenge, you can close your eyes and notice how much your body Freaks out as soon as you can't see anything. And Pokemon hunting sight is an advantage. And then exhale, let it go. Maybe shake both legs out. We'll go to the other side. Again, just kickstanding or lifting up, noticing how different it is on this side. Again, finding that balance. Breathe here. Keep that standing knee from locking. You want it to be a little bent. It will change your balance, and it's good. Again, those tippy toes that we did earlier should have really warmed you up for this. Then exhale, let it down, shake it out. Now to get to Vaporeon pose, you can continue to do this if that works best for you, but full Vaporeon pose is called dancer's pose. So you start by kicking your heel up and just holding. Maybe just giving yourself a little stretch here. Notice the balance you've already put into that one leg. Don't lock your standing knee. Really spread your toes. You won't wait on all portions of the foot. So for dancers, then you hold your foot, pressing in with the back of your foot to your hand, and you lift and kick back. That's a start. Then you can go further by stretching out your other arm and really kicking into it and hinging at the hip a little. You should have your muscles so engaged that it literally feels like you're pushing and pulling your foot at the same time. 
Your gaze should be down or at your hands. And you breathe here. <laughs> and then let it go when you need to. So that's dancer's pose over the poor ant pose. We have to do the other side. So kick into it, holding here, breathing, noticing your standing foot already. Don't lock the knee. Really feel the weight on all edges of the toe. And then when you're ready, you kick into your hand, beginning to arch your back a little. Maybe you extend that opposite arm. Maybe you hinge at the hip. Similar hinging as you do in warrior three. Again, it may be different on this side, that's okay. Breathe. That's your dancer or Vaporian, other side. And then again, come out of it as safely as possible. Roll your shoulders back and breathe. All right, so we have found some Pokemon. The last thing we have to do is the dragon gym battle because of course, I am the dragon leader from Sword and Shield in this costume. So for our last big pose, we're gonna do a dragon pose. And for that, just come on down to your hands and knees. Notice again where your weight is. Equal on those finger pads and the backs of your legs. To do dragon, you're gonna lift, oh, I'm gonna move my camera. There you go, much better. You're gonna lift up one hand. Feel like you're tearing it away from the earth and you've got that claw, so you're really using the shoulder blade here. Just do that a couple times. And then the other side. You want those knees and hips to stay the same, but you're really putting effort into your hands here. Good, now both hands down. To do dragon pose, <laughs> you're gonna lift up your hand and take the same side leg and step your foot forward like this. And then you can lean into it. For full actual dragon pose, you're gonna stretch out a little bit more so you've got that big hip distance but don't put your knee over your foot, but you'll feel the burn of the dragon. And then you can have your hands up or down, depending on what pose you have. If you need a block here, which would help me, go like this, dragon pose. We're gonna be here for about 30 seconds, so breathe, feel the burn, fight the trainer with all the elements, maybe focus on your breath. Maybe focus on the points of the earth and the ground and the grass that your body is touching. Maybe embrace the burn and show them fire. Or perhaps because dragons are also weak to dragons, you embrace the dragon within. Three more breaths. Two and one. Walk your feet back if they were out, pull it in. And we're gonna go into a child's pose here to rest, or if you need something else, do that stretch. Three breaths here. <sighs> Are you ready? Round two, here we go. Back on hands and knees. You're going to first, again, lift up those arms. Maybe do side to side. Warming up and feeling the weight on your legs. And then when you're ready, lift your left arm up or the opposite arm and then step through. And you can stay here or you can walk your foot out. And lean into it, hold in your dragon pose where it works for you on the other side. Breathing here, we'll be here for about 30 seconds. Again, focus on the elements, perhaps even feeling your heart beating your breath, maybe the sounds. Maybe there's a fairy type cheering you on. Three more breaths. Two, one, and down. Wow, you guys beat them in two rounds. Good job. Come on back, find what you need to stretch out. I'm actually gonna go into a little windshield wiper here. And with that, we have completed our Pokemon journey. Set a cool down, we'll do a couple stretches. If there's something that you like to do, feel free. I'm gonna start with the butterfly pose. This is gonna be reclined. So if you wanna do a boat pose coming down, 
feel free. And then take your legs with your feet together into diamond or butterfly or butterfree. <laughs> and your hands and arms can go wherever feels right for you. Just notice those hips and arms. Thank them for their work as we went and captured whichever Pokemon you found. Or at least an Eevee. Breathing. From here, take your arms, have those fingers pointing up, press your shoulder blades into the ground. One more time. Since we've been doing that flossing, take your arms down and back, just noticing the difference in your shoulders now that we've warmed them up. With the breath, inhale up, exhale down at your own speed. We'll do one more set. Then pull your knees together, tuck your heels a little bit so you've got them close to your bottom. And then from here, we're going to give ourselves a hug. Thanking yourself for coming to the practice. And then we're gonna plant our feet first. We're gonna do our bridges. So your feet are planted, arms are down, shoulders are down. You're just gonna lift your hips just a little. Just a little. Holding here. For three, two, one, and let go. Just notice the difference here. Notice your grounding, right? Inhale, lift your hips higher. Pull those thighs together. Feel like they're wrapping together. Again, if you have that block, maybe put it between your thighs. I'm breathing here for three, two, and one. And if you have wheel in your practice, you are welcome to do that next. If you're with me, we're gonna do one more set of bridge. Inhale up. If you're in wheel, remember to stay strong, keeping your focus. And when you come down for wheel, make sure to tuck that chin first. We're gonna hold it for three, two, and release. Again, notice the difference. Taking breaths, just staying stable here. And then we'll hug in one more time. And you can take your twists of choice here. For me, we're gonna keep our knees together this time. Using your core, using your abs, you're gonna let both knees fall to one side, keeping your shoulder blades down. And they may not go all the way, that's fine. Again, if you need this block under your knees, adjust to what works for you. Keep those shoulder blades down. Maybe look the opposite direction of your knees and breathe. And when you're ready, use your core again to lift those knees up Hold them center, maybe give yourself a hug again, maybe roll those ankles, and then use your core to let both float down to the other side. Finding where your arms need to be, keeping those shoulder blades down, and breathe. And when you're ready, again, using your abs and core, lift, 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 pull them in. Give yourself a big hug. And then extend those legs out. I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of a shake here. <laughs> We're gonna do something that happens in yoga a lot, but that we don't generally do here. Uh, it's gonna be an inversion. Uh, so, you have multiple choices here. You can do legs up the wall, uh, or you can help to lift your own body up, or you can just stay laying on the ground, that's fine too. For legs up the wall, you scooch up to the wall, you rotate, and you put your legs up. And then you find where your arms need to be. Another option that we'll do is from here, laying with your feet up, 
you're going to use your abs to lift your hips and then you use your arms like a tripod to hold it up. So your feet can be up <laughs> like this, feet flexed, or maybe you need to keep your knees bent. You can do a butterfly here too. <laughs> Find what works for you, but you really want to hold strong with your arms and don't put too much pressure into your neck. This is not for everybody. Wherever you are in your inversion, try to find some balance in, in your breath. And again, if you are in the full handstand, headstand, legs up in the air by themselves, feel free to do any variations. Maybe you go down into plow or have something else that works for you. Again, find your inversion of choice. So this is what plow looks like. Your feet should touch the ground. Legs should be strong. For me, this is actually a little difficult to breathe. So I'm going to lift on back up. Some days it works better than others for me. We'll stay here for a few more breaths. Come back to your element. Come back to your intention. And if your legs up the wall and you want to stay there, for Savasana, feel free. If you are in an inversion, gently find your way back down. Tuck in that chin if you need to. And then take any other movements that you need. Some people really like to do crow here. <laughs> Anything else that you need before we go into our Savasana. Okay, for Savasana, Guess what pose we call this with the cosplaying yogis? It's Snorlax pose. <laughs> so all you do is you lay down. Legs wider than your mat. Arms out. Relax your neck. Maybe roll it back and forth. Make sure those shoulders are back and down. Again, if your legs are up the wall and you want to stay there, that's wonderful. Or if you need any other resting pose, do that. Maybe you put your legs or your feet up on blocks using some of those aids that we've gone over before. Or maybe you pull a blanket over top because you will cool down. Wherever you are, let your eyes close. Come back to your breath. Notice if this changed. Notice the heat that you've probably built up. Notice your body, if anything is tighter or looser. Notice the points where you're touching the ground, earth and grass. Notice the feeling of the air on your skin. Maybe feeling the water, the blood, the ichor flowing through you. Even maybe some psychic fairy energy providing healing. Come into yourself. Come back to your intention. And I'm gonna guide you through a little exercise to relax. For the Savasana, you're going to picture your own pokeball, your own secret hideout where you can go and be safe from everyone else. What does the inside look like? Is it really big and you have tons of room to run around? Is there an Olympic-sized swimming pool if you're a water type? Do you have a nice fluffy bed with tons of pillows and plushies? What does it look like? Look around your pokeball, which is the most comfortable, cozy, you place that you can imagine. Everything that you want is here. Look around and see if there's some place that looks really cozy and relaxing. 
Maybe it's a nice little grove of flowers. It's a shade under a tree. Maybe it's the beach. Or maybe again, that's that fluffy bed. Find what works for you and just settle into it and feel that love and peace surrounding you. Look around again and just know that this is your home. This is your safe space. And when you're here in your Pokeball, you can rest and recharge for whatever comes next. I'll let you relax here for a few breaths and I'll call you back out when it's time to go. And when you're ready, give one last look around your custom hideout, your safe, cozy, and totally you Pokeball. And imagine that you're seeing the Pokeball cracking open and the light of the world around you begins to fill you. As you see it, you're filled with peace and confidence that you can face your next challenge. Begin to deepen your breath and come back to the world around you. Maybe start to move your fingers and toes, rolling your wrists and ankles, doing what you need to slowly wake up, maybe come into a full body stretch really big. When you're ready, just roll to one side and stay there for a moment, going from your corpse or Snorlax pose into the fetal pose, just curled up there, again, nice and safe. And remember that that Pokeball, that safe space is there for you whenever you need it. All you need is just a couple minutes of meditation. Thank yourself for going on that journey, and just as I thank you for joining me on this journey today. And when you're ready, come up to a comfortable seat. Your eyes can be closed or you can have a gentle gaze. Come back to your intention. Decide if you want to keep it for the rest of your day. And maybe the adventure continues or perhaps there's something else that you need going forward. Whatever that is, choose that next intention and we'll seal it the same way that we began. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, drawing them down to heart center. We'll seal it with two breaths. So first big inhale in, exhale out. And then the biggest breath yet, and exhale everything out. And with that, the light, the love, the teacher and me, Honors and thanks, the light, the love, and the teacher in all of you, and also the Pokemon trainer in all of you. Thank you for coming with me on this journey. Again, I am Ripwing Designs, and I thank you for being here for Pokemon Yoga. With that, namaste.